So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do a independent one-way ANOVA, also known as a between subjects or between participants one-way ANOVA on Jamovi. So we're going to use this test when we have a independent categorical variable comprised of at least three levels and when we have a continuous dependent variable. So for this example, let's imagine that we are interested in the effect of three different types of treatments on how happy people feel. So in this spreadsheet, we have 10 people represented by the number zero. Let's say that these 10 people are in treatment A and we have 10 people represented by the number one. And let's say that these people are in treatment B and we have 10 people represented by the number two. And let's say that these people are in treatment C. And in this column here, we have happiness scores out of 10. So let's start off by copying and pasting this data into Jamovi. So I'm just gonna select it all and then hit Command or Control C. I'll then go to Jamovi and select the top left cell and I'll press Command or Control V to paste those data in. We can then just tell Jamovi a little bit about these variables. So let's click on data at the top then go down to setup and then if I select A here, we can tell Jamovi about this variable. So this is our independent variable. And let's call this one something like treatments. And we can see that we have nominal selected in this measure type menu already. So that is kind of another word for categorical. So we don't need to change anything there. And we can use this bit here to tell Jamovi what the different levels of the independent variable are. So let's say that zero equals treatments A, uh, one equals treatment B, and two equals treatment C. And then if we just press enter after entering those descriptions, we can see that the numbers are replaced by treatment A, treatment B, and treatment C. Next, let's tell Jamovi about the dependent variable. So I'm gonna click on B here. And in this case, the dependent variable is happiness. So we've got happiness scores out of 10. And we can use this measure type menu here to tell Jamovi that this dependent variable is continuous. So once we've done that, we can start to test the assumptions of this test and we can get on to running the analysis. So this test assumes that the data are normally distributed in each one of the levels or groups within the independent variable. So for example, if we look at treatment A, do we have this nice symmetrical bell curve distribution, which would be a normal distribution? And do we have the same thing for treatment B and for treatment C? The test also assumes that we have something called homogeneity of variance, which essentially just means that the data are spread out to a similar extent across the different levels or different groups of the independent variable. So we can check the test of homogeneity or variance when we run the analysis, but we can check the assumption or normality before running the analysis. So let's check that assumption now. So to do that, I'm gonna go up to analyses and then across to exploration and then down to descriptives. I'm then going to transfer my independent variable to the split by box and the dependent variable to the variables box. I'll then go to statistics. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that we have this Shapiro Wilk box. So this is a test of normality. So if we take that box, that's going to perform some normality tests for us. So let's focus on the bottom part of this table. So we can see here that we have a p-value for the superior Wilk test. And we want to see that the p-value for each group or each level is above 0.05. So we can see that that is the case here. So all of these three values are above 0.05. And that tells us that the data are normally distributed in each one of the three levels within the independent variable. So that assumption has been met. If you see that this assumption has been violated, you could consider doing a non-parametric equivalent of the one-way ANOVA, such as a Kruskal-Wallace test. So now that we've checked that assumption, we can go on to running the analysis. 
and checking the other assumption, which is that there is homogeneity or variance. So to run the analysis and to check this assumption, let's go up to analyses, then down to ANOVA, and then to one-way ANOVA. I'm then going to transfer my independent variable to the grouping variable box and my dependent variable to the dependent variables box. I'm then going to go down to this bit here where it says assumption checks and I will tick the homogeneity test box and we can see that this runs this Levine's test of homogeneity or variances for us. And again we want to see that the value is above 0.05 as this indicates that the assumption has been met. So we have this p-value here is 0.624. As this is above 0.05, it indicates that the assumption of homogeneity or variances has been met. So the result of this test actually determines what we want to have ticked over here. So if the assumption is violated, you can run this Welsh's test. But if the assumption is met, so equal variances are assumed, you can run Fisher's test. And as we have this p-value above 0.05, the assumption has been met. So let's tick this assume equal box and let's untick this don't assume equal box. We can also request some post hoc tests. So the ANOVA is going to tell us whether there's a significant effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable, but it's not going to tell us whether there are significant differences between each specific level within the independent variable. So it won't tell us whether there's a significant difference in happiness between treatment A and B, between B and C, or between A and C. And so to test this, we need to perform some post hoc tests. So I'm gonna go down to post hoc tests down here. And then it's a similar situation to before. So we have two options here, unequal variances or equal variances. Since we have established that we do have equal variances, I'm going to select this Chuki option here. So let's now take a look at the output that we've generated. So actually this part here was generated when we checked normality earlier. So this actually provides us with means and standard deviations for each of the different levels of the independent variable. So we can see that happiness in treatment A was 5.2, that's the mean, treatment B 6.9, and treatment C 4.3. So we have the highest levels of happiness in treatment B. And the ANOVA is going to tell us whether there's a significant impact of treatment type on levels of happiness. And if we focus specifically on this p-value, we want to see in this case that the p-value is below 0.05, as this indicates a significant impact of the independent variable on the dependent variable. So in this case, we have a value of below 0.001, as this is below 0.05 there's a significant impact of treatment on levels of happiness. As I mentioned before, we don't yet know whether treatment A differs from treatment B, B from C, or A from C. And so we also need to look at the post hoc test to establish this. So if we look here, we can see that treatment A is in this top bit here, and then we have treatment A, B, and C in these different columns here. Now if we focus on these p-values, we can see that we have a p-value of 0.017, for the difference between treatment B and treatment A. As this is below 0.05, it indicates that there is a significant difference in happiness between treatment A and treatment B. However, if we look at the p-value that corresponds to the difference between treatment C and treatment A, we have a p-value above 0.05, indicating that there is not a significant difference between these two treatments. Lastly, if we look at the p-value corresponding to treatment B and treatment C, or the difference in happiness between those two conditions, we have a value of below 0.001. As this is below 0.05, there's a significant difference in happiness between treatment A and treatment C. So let's take a look at how to report these results. So I have this example results section here. So I started off just saying, what test was done and why. So I've said a one-way independent analysis of variance or an ANOVA was conducted to investigate the impact of treatment type. And then I've just specified what the different levels of the independent variable were. So treatment A, treatment B, treatment C on happiness scores. And then I've reported the results of the normality tests. So specifically we did a Shapiro-Wilk test or 
technically three different Shapiro Wilk tests. And I've said that Shapiro Wilk tests indicated that the data were normally distributed in the treatment A, treatment B, and treatment C conditions. And then I've just inserted some statistics to support that. So let's take a look at where those statistics come from. So if we go back to the outputs, we've got these Shapiro Wilk W values and the Shapiro Wilk P values. So treatment A W value is 0 0.933. And that corresponds to what I have here, W equals 0.93. So I've just rounded that to two decimal places. And then the P value for treatment A, 0 0.479. And that corresponds to what I have here, P equals 0.479. And I also just have this 10 here, which represents how many people were in that group. So we can see we have 10 people in each of the groups. So in each of the cases here, we have 10 in brackets. And then I've just reported the W value and the P value for treatment B and treatment C as well. And of course that just comes from this bit here. So next we have the results of the homogeneity of variance assumption check. So we've got Levine's test indicated that the assumption of homogeneity or variance was met. And then I've inserted some statistics. So we have F equals 0 0.48. And that is coming from this homogeneity or variances test table. So F is here and it's 0 0.479. So I've just rounded that to two decimal places here. And then we've got two different degrees of freedom values here, two and 27. So DF1, two, DF2 is 27. And then we've got the p-value, p equals 0.624, p is 0.624. And then we've got the results of the ANOVA itself. So I said that there was a significant effect of treatment type. And I've said that f equals 10.60. And that's coming from this one-way ANOVA table, 10.6. So I've just included a zero there as well. And I've said that the degrees of freedom are 2 and 27. That's what we have here, 2 and 27. And I've said that the p-value is less than 0 0.001. And that's what we have here. Lastly, I've just reported some descriptive statistics and the results of the Chuki post hoc comparisons. So I've said that Chuki post hoc comparisons revealed that happiness scores following treatment A were significantly lower than those following treatment B. So we've got these means and standard deviations for treatment A here. So mean is 5.20, standard deviation is 1.14. Let's take a look at where that comes from. Mean treatment A 5.20, standard deviation treatment A 1.14. So that corresponds to what we have here. And I've done the same thing for treatment B and treatment C here. So of course those values just come from the treatment B and treatment C rows of the mean and standard deviation sections of this descriptive statistics table. And then I've just also reported the p-values from this post hoc test table. So for example, the p-value representing the difference between treatment A and treatment B is 0.017. And that's what we have at the end of this sentence here, P equals 0 0.017. So that is basically it for how to do a one-way independent ANOVA on Jamovi. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.